Have you ever dreamt of crafting your own epic wargaming battlefield, but found DIY building and 3D modeling just a little bit intimidating? Well, you're not alone. In this video, we're gonna be revealing a game changer, and that is Battlefield Builder by Townsmith. This revolutionary program can bring your wargaming dreams to life. Stick around as I walk you through this effortless process and at the end of the video, you'll be able to print your custom terrain like a pro. Now to give a bit of context, I don't have everything I need to put together a good wargaming board. I've got a two x two desert playmat, which works well with some of my orc crash planes that I have. However, it's a bit small for the games that I wanna play. I also have some 3D printed Space Hulk terrain from Sourceman Studios and some other random bits of scattered terrain, but I don't have anything that resembles the classic grim dark future of 40K and other sci-fi settings that a lot of our futuristic wargaming is set in. You know, I want that gothic architecture, industrial ruins to show a cityscape that has been decimated by battle and war. I have a Kickstarter which is live at the publishing of this video and the link is in the description below. It's a program that you can run in your web browser that allows you to create printable terrain. You can print it in FDM without supports and if your printer has the functionality, you can download it for multicolor printing. They've also released a successful Kickstarter for a fantasy version called Town Builder. So before I ramble on too much, let's get into it. Now you load up Battlefield Builder and it can be quite intimidating as there's lots of buttons and other things staring you down on the screen. If you ever get stuck, there's a wiki located in the top right that you can click on, which has tutorials and instructions on how you can do the different tasks. First thing I wanted to do when I was starting out was setting out my grid size. I'm gonna be doing a 22 by 30 inch board. Like th these are all cosmetic adjustments, but it just kind of helps you get a scale for what you're building. You can also adjust the battle mat. It's just another cosmetic thing. Most of the controls are pretty intuitive. Left click to drag and select things, right click to rotate the camera and the middle mouse button to move the camera. Let's make our first structure. Click on the ruins tool located kind of in the middle left of the screen. Once selected, left click anywhere on the grid. It doesn't really matter where it is because you can move it later on. Simply drag and place the walls where you want them. You can also use W and S to lower and raise the height of these walls. When you're done, simply right click and if you're happy with it, you can click the tick in the bottom right. This will start generating the different textures on the walls. On the far right, there's a banding section where you can see all the different options and deselect the options that you don't want to appear. If you happen to miss any of them, you can always edit later on. Now, once the generating starts, sometimes it can take a while. Patience. Patience, my love. One thing to do is be patient and don't old tab out of that browser tab. Make sure you're still in that active tab, otherwise it slows it down. Once everything's generated, there's an exchange tool which lets you swap out the selected feature for a different feature in the selection on the right. There are also railing and pipe tools which work very similar to the ruins tool. If you wanna add some railings, what I usually do is go to the floor above. This is in the bottom right. There are up and down arrows which let you navigate for different floors. In the second floor, I like to use the railings just to go right on top of the ruins. It's very similar to the ruins tool. And if you don't make the railings at the max height, they will be generated as ruined or broken, like partially broken. You can also add some pipes to the battlefield to add kind of like a bit of cover, but it doesn't block full line of sight. This kind of adds to that industrial vibe. As easy as this program is to use, I was looking at the Kickstarter and just seeing the images of like the pros building and it does require a bit of skill and creativity to create objects on that level. It's not out of reach, it just takes a bit of practice, but once you play around with it enough, you can start to get a good idea of what you can and can't do with the program. What is he doing? He's beginning to believe. I feel like what I've designed so far just kind of isn't up to scratch yet, but I, I think I'll tinker around with it a little and then start downloading it and printing it out. Now, one of the things that's important to do is to start segmenting or grouping your buildings. By breaking them up into groups, this allows you to print the buildings in multiple pieces, unless you have a massive printer or with like one giant piece, this is the best way to go about it. What you do is get the select tool in the top left, select the pieces that you want in one group, then right click and hit create group, rinse and repeat for the rest of the structures 
that you've created. In the connections, bet particularly between the floors, there's an option for adding slots, for magnets, or pegs or dowels for joining the different walls. You can also use filament too. This is done with the connect tool that's located near the bottom left and you can see all the different options. There's also a color tool where you can color the different parts and it's really set up for multicolor printing. I've ignored that because I don't have a bamboo or an other printer that allows for that functionality. But if you have one, it is there for you. My final thoughts, it is a great program with basically endless possibilities. Just with the amount of combinations you can do, like it's really up to your imagination. There is a lot of room to grow by adding new textures. Just imagine having different textures for like orcs or necrons or something else like that. You could simply take a design you've already made and then just reskin it and now it looks quite different. It can be a little tricky at first to learn, but after you spend a bit of time, it becomes quite easy. If you're interested in the Kickstarter, there's an affiliate link below and that helps out the channel. Thank you for watching and happy hobbying.